Hey guys, welcome back to the wonderful world of The Order 1886. It's Pixelology 101 doing a run through today, and once again I'm Professor Devin with Professor Rod. Hola. And Professor Nate. Professor Nate off in the corner. <laughs> Indeed. Um, the graphics look kind of like TF2, kind of like cartoony in the distance. Looks weird. Look, you know, the visuals of this game are kind of unique in that they are so generically forgettable in terms of like the, city's the overall aesthetic the but at the same time like the individual characters look really nice like I would say that her character outfit looks good there's an interchange it's just very forgettable here. it's hard to make characters look good though hey look at this who's gonna remember the nice train yard walk through this rebel territory and if we were going to rebel territory, why was that guy guarding in the first place? Like, isn't he a rebel, supposedly? Or are well, we, no. Are we doing? I thought we were, like, sneaking someplace. We came in through these tunnels behind us, and we're trying to currently get to a secret she's showing us, uh, where she got the black water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not sure whose side that rebel was on. I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to be going, but that, I know I that's a collectible. Figure. Collectible is that you leave. Uh, are you kidding? S no. Slotten. Who is that? Who is that? Who's S. Lawton? That hammer made out of wood. Yeah, it it's is. It's a wooden hammer. That is, uh... <laughs> what was the point? <laughs> get you very far. The man was so proud of his hammer, he engraved his name on it, man. you got to keep your wooden hammer. It, you know, those things, they oh, last for ages. Bother. I was about to check if that had reflections, but I remember perhaps we've already done that. Yeah, perhaps we can use a way up. Like, those obviously packed crates over here. For some reason, I think the, how well lit those posts are with those yeah, white paint, that it was like a climbable thing. Because you know how people in like parkour games love to just illuminate your way with painted bright objects. So I thought, hey, you can climb those posts up. Where did she go? Like, that took her so long. <laughs> she like ran by and forgot. Hey guys, I have an idea. I'm, we're, we both are going to push this now. You go back there. I'm going to take a quick piss and then uh, join you later. I'd like to point out too that I thought that was a crate. That's why I'm stupid. Man, this game is so exciting. The action. <laughs> Even the action. So, um, while we're pushing this, let's let's talk about what's up. Uh, we haven't played in about a week, Still. and in that week, uh, we should be able to climb Witcher 3 has come out, which is a vastly superior game to this in every house. single possible way, <laughs> and I haven't even played it yet. I haven't played it yet either. Uh, there's, not, there's not a million cutscenes in The Witcher 3, are there? Nope. Okay, there you go. There's games it's already the Witcher, better, right? Yeah, and... What's cool is even during cutscenes you can skip parts of it, like dialogue parts, so you don't actually have to skip the entire cutscene. Which way do I want to go here? Not that way. Do I don't know. Way. The game ain't telling you shit. Oh, oh, I think I have to climb back. Climb back yeah, that way. Down down there's a ladder. To your right. No, no. Go to your right. You see? There's there a path. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then what's that? Backtracking. You're going to probably go back there. From, oh, you see? Uh, you see the left? You're going to climb that ledge to your left. Oh, other way. Nope. Can't go that way. Other way, Ezio. this way. Uh, See, I wanted, Assassin's I wanted Creed. the freedom to go where I wanted. Freedom? You wanted freedom? Why are you playing the Order? Yeah. <laughs> Touche. Uh, speaking of Assassin's Creed, you see, uh, what was it, Assassin's Creed Syndicate? Syndicate. I will be honest. I loved Assassin's Creed the whole way through, or I was interested by the concept. When Assassin's Creed came out in 2007, uh, I kept look at on it. It was one of the first like 360 PS3 next gen games I really wanted to play. It was it was one of those it, wasn't it like the title ship game of the 360 I believe? It, no, no cuz 360 was 2005. Um, oh wow. It came out in 2007. 2007. It was one of the earliest games and it was amazing. Oh, Assassin's Creed 2 was even better. Like I beat that game. It was absolutely stunning and I, I think it was one of the best games of the last generation. I'm gonna say when your um, second game is the height of the series. Then Brotherhood and Revelations, and I played all of them. I beat all of Hurry. them. Hurry! The um, is bound to pass this way sooner or later. And yes. now I mean, here we are. I just am about to finish up Assassin's Creed Unity. I'm literally one mission away. I think I'm on the last mission. And I saw that announcement, and I literally oh, couldn't care less. Don't think this is the I think that they have truly, it is the perfect example of franchise fatigue. Um, what am I seeing? Oh. Oh, you're, there. was that the sniper? Or? Were you supposed to do that? Did, no, did it automatically put you in that mode? No, I did that on my own, but I thought that was the sniper. Um, I think he's further down the way. 
Yeah, I think so. He realistically, he would have just died because he was in a. He's if he's in a position and he was just watching the entire time and he picked his shot, he just shot you in the fucking shoulder. This is the worst sniper I've ever seen in my life. He had all the time in the world to shoot you. Try to find a way to stop him. Oh, to the right. I'm guessing you have to go around. You have to go around. Somewhere. No, I think you go in the building oh. over there. To your left, maybe? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yep. Um, where the sniper can see me, run up. So we're going to have a sniper yeah. duel or something along those lines. Yeah. For, for me, for Assassin's Creed, I, oh my I did God, the damn. exact same thing. Yeah. I played through all the games. Oh, my God, damn it. <laughs> well, it could be worse. I could be playing this video game right now. Um, oh, my God, damn You were saying? <laughs> I, played, I played through all of them. Uh, they kept like I said. Two, you're right. You said two was the best. I probably agree with two being the best because uh, three and four uh, revelations and brotherhood they kind of expanded on two a little bit. But and then three came out and I was really disappointed with three. It was fun, but it had so much hype behind it. And then four came out and I absolutely loved four because you got pirating in because there's not a lot of pirating games out there. Yeah. And this was a, a good pirating game. And but then all of a sudden. Five comes out and they're like, oh, you know those ships that were so fun in the last game? God. They're not in this game. Uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, okay. He's really just gonna let me have it. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> I thought he, I thought he just committed suicide. I didn't know there was a balcony there. I thought he just jumped. Into the bed. <laughs> I was like, yes, I got him. It's Sir Galahad. Ah! <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I didn't even. To be honest, I didn't even like four that much. Uh, it was a cool game and it was like a cool concept, but I didn't think that it was necessarily that great. It doesn't really fit with the whole theme of the series. Yeah, I would like, have preferred it to be its own, you know, spin-off adventure. Well, which they did. Um, with Rogue. Where is it? Probably from that down there. Down the bullet pings. With the, the wooden... The look, wooden look how well the enemies like, though blend into the environment here. Yeah, it, that's what I was talking about earlier. Visually, this game is just... It's very, very gray. And gray is so unappealing. You have to do things with gray. It's, it's uniform, and it actually... It's a detriment to gameplay. Like, it's harder to see enemies in the environment. And it was one of those things, especially at such a high angle, even though I had the clear above or the clear high ground, I couldn't even see them for a second. And yeah, I guess part of that could be considered player incompetence. Stay um, put while I handle the sniper. But at the same time, like, they're wearing it. <laughs> wow. I, I'd like to point out I was hitting this triangle I guess and the guy was apparently it. It's like he, he was meant to run away from you. Yeah, apparently that, that didn't work. Um but yeah, they were so bland they they blended into the street and at the end result, like I couldn't literally couldn't see them for a good three or four seconds and ended up getting damaged. It's crazy, like how they managed to make the game look so generic that the enemies are, are chameleon into it. Plus, another thing that sucks with gray is when the game is foggy, the fog is also gray. So then you have you have gray background, gray fog, gray enemies. Ugh. You can't see anything. Yeah, it's it's visually this game. Not only is it unappealing, but it's genuinely. Man, you got blasted. Was there a shot? Yeah, there? I, I think, shot I think I rushed right. you. So the other right. thing I really hate about this game is the fact that there are so many particle effects. I get that they wanted it to be a really beautiful, amazing PS4 mm -hmm. game. And particle effects are definitely, you know, sexy, awesome. They're the latest and greatest. Uh, but when you get a face full of flipping particle effects and broken pottery and you can't see anything going on, it's just slightly accurate. Oh my goodness. There's the shot that guy. Uh I wonder if they thought this would be a fun environment to battle out in. See, that's what I think was going with like the pottery and everything. They were like, "Oh, it's all going to get messed Brilliant. up, and yeah. it's going to be a cool, like spectacular, spectacular battle." But it really, it really isn't. I don't think it contributes itself very well. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Anyway, going back to what we were saying, I didn't even like Assassin's Creed uh, for that much. And three, I mean, three was okay. I guess as a an end to a trilogy, it was exactly what I expected. Um, but it was really just depressing. Like it, the whole series didn't feel that well done. So oh, apparently, this. Yeah. Oh, oh. There oh. you go. Nice. You got him in the head. Uh, apparently, uh, watch that guy come around. Maybe a long range weapon wasn't good for indoor. Yeah, but I was telling you about my thing 
Literally, look at this. Just jugging your way. <laughs> I can somewhat agree with you with Assassin's Creed 4. Like, the piracy element of it wasn't really in depth. Like, there was no, like, smuggling or stuff like that. Well, it was cool. I just, it didn't fit with the Assassin's nature. Yeah, I didn't I feel saying. like I was on an Assassin's journey. I felt more like I was just this dude who happened to get wrapped up in a major conspiracy. Which was stupid, because this genetic bloodline supposedly been going back for thousands of years and needs to be this big secret order. As a pirate game, it felt cool. As an Assassin's Creed game, it felt bad. And Unity was even worse. Unity was one of my least favorite games last year. I think it was the biggest mistake I've made last year in terms of pur purchases. Um, I don't like that game. I don't think it was very good. It was entertaining as like an Assassin's game, I guess. But it wasn't very well designed. There were glitches everywhere. The game didn't feel fun. It didn't flow well. I don't know what it has to do with any of the other Assassin's Creed. Oh, buddy! Nice. Buddy! Oh, jerk! How's it God. feel? Huh? Jeez, I want to give you a breakdown of a level I played in Unity that really Ooh. turned me off the game. So. The Assassin's Creed game has always been, it's open world, it's all about approaching your target how you want to, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, this one level, there was a target at the top of a castle, and you know how there's optional objectives for you to do? It's like, oh, hey, take out so many guys from cover or whatever while you're, while you're completing the level. Well, I was playing my own way, and I, the game wanted you to go into this courtyard, go through the inside, and go up and assassinate the guy. I went around the outside of the building and climbed up the outside wall and came up to the top and assassinated the guy. And then when I, after I uh, completed the mission, it said, hey, you failed all these objectives, which it never gave me because I completely passed over the spot where it wanted me to complete those objectives. I'm like, that is forcing me to play their way. Their yeah. way. Yeah. I wanted those, to play my way. My way of coming in like that was different from any other way. And they're like, you can't do that. If you want to get 100% sync, you have to do it this specific yeah. way. Assassin's Creed 1 and 2 were both very much about planning out your kill and executing it how you want it. They were similar to uh, Hitman in yes. that respect, in that they let you kind of plan it out and do it how you want it. Jeez. Just give it a Grenade. Um, but yeah, the rest of the Assassin's Creed series has just railroaded you, and it's awful. Unity was so boring, and it could have been an amazing game. I mean, in the French Revolution... Oh, oh nice, you shot that in there. Um, could you imagine how interesting that would have been in the, the French Revolution, the playing the way you wanted to? But no, at the end of the day, you got... Trying again. No, I'm just trying to shoot this Why don't you just with... go and kill him? He has smoke grenades. That's all he's throwing at you. You go up and shotgun uh, him. Yeah, because there's a submachine gun right here. That was not oh, Are you kidding? You can't push him. There you go. <coughs> um, it was just awful. It was not. It was not good. It wasn't fun. I had At the end of the day, I think it was just a. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, I thought someone shot it. No, that was you. You no, knocked into it over. and knocked it down. Uh, yeah, I, it was just... It was an example of... I don't have time. Yeah, he's got a... Yeah, so am I. Oh, shit. Get out of that. Like, that looks cool. The thermite in this the thermite looks does really cool. Uh, I wish it burned, like, the environment more and destroyed things. But I can understand why it doesn't. Wow, we have any grenades? Back there. There's all these people hiding behind the same <laughs> One crate. <laughs> I'll hide behind the crate. Well, where do I'm gonna hide behind? Okay, you can hide behind the crate too. What about me? Okay, <laughs> you can hide behind the crate too. Alright, guys. Right. Larry, Jim, Joe. You guys are all gonna hide behind that milk crate right there. Um, so that doesn't seem very efficient. What if he throws a grenade or something? <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Just go. You got your cover. You got the guns, you got the artillery, the second he picks out, you all unload all at once from different angles of the crate, make it look awesome. Oh look, don't forget to be wearing your patches from the other stupid thing. God knows you're not on the ship anymore, but you still need the patch. There we go. I blame you all the death, I will. The sound effect of the gun is just amazing. When you launch that flare? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's satisfying, but the gun itself is not, it's not that effective. You have to oh. use it multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> like a thermite burning on you will will like hurt. It'll probably hurt. Like actually, I, 
Yeah, the concept it, it would of it as an actual gun probably wouldn't kill you. It would probably burn you horribly. Burn, like, burns hot. It and and burn it burns through stuff. stuff, so it burns through uh, your organs and everything. You know what? I, Plus, it probably some... suffocate, gets all the air away from you and you yeah, suffocate. Yeah, something like a fuel air bomb takes out all the air in the round for a split mm. second. We got so distracted that I forgot to summarize my final point. Or maybe I just rambled too much. Long, long, long Hold story on. short, I'm I that. really, really, really don't like the way Syndicate looks. That game Syndicate. looks atrocious. Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Syndicate. It looks oh, yeah. boring, it looks generic, the fights look stupid, uh, the characters are uninteresting at best, and the dude from Unity was... The French Ezio, which is already saying Dude, very little. That that's what got me. I was I've like, this character is basically Ezio. Like, because that's oh, that's oh, the best oh, character of the series. Oh, is Ezio. That, that's true, but why can't we have another good character? Why do we yeah. have to keep yeah. going back Don't to Ezio? Don't bring me back to Ezio. Edward Tenway already did that, except for he Move was more of a douchebag than a likable asshole. Like, he was just pure douchebag. Oh, great. Now get the sniper. Well, you gotta understand one thing, too. It's also, you know, the same. It's the same bloodline, so a lot of people are going to be related. Well, no. Um, Freaking Edward Kenway and uh, What's His Face are both on a different bloodline than Desmond, because Desmond dies at the end of Assassin's Creed 3. Spoiler for those who oh, haven't played that. He didn't die. Game. Yeah, Keep he, he did. He sacrificed himself. I thought he stabbed that fish girl. Uh, that is. <laughs> you're thinking of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Shut and he did July. stab the fish girl, really? Yeah, yeah she well. lived. No, she, no, she, 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 she ends up dying too. Okay. Um. <laughs> God. Oh, oh, somebody, oh, oh, I don't remember you. that game at well at all. Uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed 3. Oh, there's the end. <laughs> Why don't I just <laughs> solve the problem right now? <laughs> right? Oh, because of the plot. Let's, ah, have, okay. let's have my ally dressed exactly the same way as the enemy rebels. That's, that's smart. Reload. Pop it up. Shit. I don't remember 100%, but I think the story of Assassin's Creed 3 was like, the sun was gonna en engulf the world and destroy it, and then... 2012. Yeah, 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 literally 2012, 2012 and, he, and he had to, he basically had to sacrifice himself in order to keep everyone else alive. Yeah. I yeah, thought he was just locked in a bunker with them or something, that was it. Like, he was talking to, like, Nerver, one of the mm -hmm. old gods, and he was just talking to them. Yeah. I don't remember he actually dying. At the very end, when they're all walking out of the... Dude, oh, shot oh, like six. oh, you need the black water immediately. Oh, 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 oh. So part of pressing circle doesn't press, uh, okay, whatever. Um, you know, it's, I can only blame myself for that. Because didn't, yeah, yeah this for asking to play this game. Didn't Assassin's Creed 3, with, they were in the truck, right? And his dad? No, that's Brotherhood. That's Brotherhood again. Oh. Technically, that is the third game <laughs> in the series. That is the third. Assassin's Creed 3, a.k.a. Assassin's Creed, like, five. <laughs> So yeah, the series has just gone really downhill, and it's an example of how Ubisoft messed things up. It's an example of how pretty much their business plan has gone from being to supply a quality product with lots of entertainment to just spewing that crap. And Syndicate looks to reflect that, so I'm really disappointed. Thing about Syndicate I will say that looks good. I definitely wanted to play as the Indian assassin that they showed in the trailer, because an Assassin's Creed set in, like, India, like, 1300s would be sick. Yeah, why are they all, like, white assassins? I'm like, why can't we play, like, some ethnic well, assassins? Or I'm play some like, players? Connor, did in the Connor sort of, Green. yes, I guess. Keep moving, I'll cover you. You're not covering me at all. I'm just you, had to, you had to wait until you recover. Oh, well, oh, never mind. I guess this is a scripted event. Just... Just keep I'm moving to this battlefield of enemies that they're just shooting at you. Press accelerate. What part of accelerate? <laughs> like the gets wounded. <laughs> well, you don't need to be insulted. Do you? <laughs> oh crap! Uh, probably. probably. Or just no longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it's okay. What's the fuse on a grenade? <laughs> like fifty seconds. <laughs> That, well, that's that's the that's the, the sixty second grenade fuse when you want to kill someone just... in a little while. Give me some of your black water, man. This game is this pretty. This kind of, this is a trope right here that I enjoy seeing in FPS and shooter games. When there's a whole like room full of enemies out there, you just close the door on them <laughs> and, and it's gone. all fine. <laughs> <laughs> they can't figure out doors. They're too stupid. They walk up to it. This kind of advanced contraption. <laughs> you haven't seen this one yet. Can't do anything about it. Where'd those two go? Where'd that gig go? <laughs> that bl that bloody <laughs> wounded man just walked in with the girl and she just disappeared into that building. I don't I know how they got in there. I reckon it's some sort of magic ID. 
Some kind of wormhole. Too impossible for me, I reckon. <laughs> it's just a trope. I just love like, seeing They're not the even games. shooting at it or yelling and screaming or nothing. Make it's sure they like, know. That Make level's sure done. <laughs> Make sure they don't try to slink off. <laughs> so they are out there, but their solution isn't to come in to kill us. It's just to stand out there to make sure we don't come out. <laughs> so you're using puppy dog logic to like keep us alive. It's like stay in the crate. <laughs> well, right, we got them right where we wanted in that huge warehouse. Well, they can just find a way out while we, we surround it. Couldn't we throw some type of explosive? See, or, it's or nice fire. Oh, we have, have cocktails. Oh, we have our smoke grenades. But I thought we just had that one grenade. Not literally five seconds ago, sir. But that was our last grenade. You had a 20 second fuse. <laughs> we can't use those. They'll just throw it right back at us. <laughs> so stupid. This hoist might still work. This hoist might work, yeah. I'm what? pressing and holding. I need to hold it? Oh, I thought it was like some timing game? It's getting closer to, it's getting closer to the platform. Great. Oh, so. Let me guess. When I hold it, let go of it? That should be close enough. Uh -oh. oh, no. Good. <laughs> it's just like, ah, ends it. for you. <laughs> All right, so one thing that came out recently that got me really excited for a game coming out this year. I watched the new Mad Max movie, uh, Fury, Fury Road. Oh, oh God. Well, opinion. no spoilers. I haven't seen the movie yet. Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you this. Mad Max Fury Road is the best action movie I've seen in, like, the past five years. Hands down. It is the coolest movie I've seen in ages. No, you freaking game. <laughs> um, I got so excited that I just had a seizure. <laughs> That movie is way too cool. You definitely have to see it. And the game looks sick. Yeah, just after side? watching the movie, you just want to play the game. <laughs> Here, here's the problem, though. Really game comes out the same day as Metal Gear Solid 5. Yeah. Which one are you picking up? Metal Gear Solid 5? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no way I'm not. I mean, I'm, like, no way I'm not playing that. <laughs> exactly. No way you going to play Mad Max unless you absolutely hate Metal Gear Solid. I gotta get my arm, that bionic arm. What really pisses me off about that collector's edition is that the PC version's coming out like two weeks later and they yeah. haven't had a collector's edition for the PC version, so I was like, what the heck are you guys doing? Well, they almost never do collector's mm -hmm. editions for PC versions, which is really a shame they yeah. should do it more often. Um, well, not a lot of people buy PC games in stores. It's it is very digital, much digital now. Yeah, but I do like having the option for a collector's oh, edition. My Dark Souls 2 looks nice. Um, so, so well, what do you guys think of like the pre-order DLC stuff like that? Like, what do you think of those incentives to pre-order games? Is there I don't pre-order games ever, ever, ever? Like, well, I, well I'm saying I want to know. Okay, I'm yeah. not worried, really wondering about pre-orders. I'm just wondering if a pre-order bonus like those DLCs would ever be an incentive to you? Because on my count, really not. They're, like One. all of them are really Two. shit. <laughs> I have to just say it's. Still, Really I, I never pre-order games because pre-ordering a game used to be all about oh oh. So instead of pulling out my gun and shooting the guy, which I've already proved I can do with my and you're already aiming speed, at him, yeah, you're already. I instead right. had to save the girl, or I think you had to pull out a gun from her. Oh, like her no, knife. You, you like grab her shoulder and pull her. No, because you can see the pistol in my dude's holster. Look, yeah, it's right there, and I have to do this instead. Look out! Oh, Which I could have just shot that. Don't let them out. Oh, they do yeah. know how to use doors. Yep. <laughs> anyway, back to pre-ordering. I never pre-ordered, because pre-ordering used to be about guaranteeing that you're going to get a copy yeah. when the game comes out. That's never, ever been a problem for me. I, didn't, I stopped pre-ordering years ago, and I've never been like, oh, I can't find a copy of this game. Because one, there's digital download now, so you, that's an infinite amount of copies right yeah. there. You don't so have to worry about no someone reason. taking your copy. Or two, I've had, like, for example, a game like Shadows of Mordor. I didn't pre-order it or anything. I still got the pre-ordered DLC because I bought it the day it came out. Didn't have to pre-order anything because I waited for the... Because I don't want to pre-order because what if the game is crap? You pre-order it and the game sucks. Especially on waste. digital platforms, yes. Exactly. So if, if you wait for, like, a few reviews or something, because usually they come out the day of. Sometimes they'll get out, like, a week or two early. But for the That's most part, they come out the day of or a few days after. And by that time, you're still going to be able to find the game in the store. So... I don't pre-ordering is not even a thing. Even if you're like, oh, you have to pre-order to get something like this. Over here. I don't care. There's enough space. It's kind of interesting you bring up you bring up reviews because I remember you, whenever you look online to like find some reviews of certain games, they're delayed for the that purposeful reason to try to get as many sales as they can before the news is out. This game sucks, stuff like that. Well, there's like sometimes review embargoes are for that, but also it's for to give 
the reviewers in enough time to play, because sometimes they don't get review copies until way later, so they have to have enough time to play the game to give it a fair review. And at the same time, too, that's also when patches come out, like mm -hmm. day one patches. Mm -hmm. Which brings up a fair point. Why do we need day one patches? <laughs> yeah. Why do we need... Why not fix the game before you... Exactly. I've never understood that. I, I love The Witcher 3. Here's an example. I love that game. But I was one of those people that no matter what I did in the game, whenever I went to my inventory screen, the game would crash on me. It was like a 30% chance it would crash whenever I went to that screen. Just randomly. The game... Like, I had, like two days after the game came out, patch came out, and now I can play the game perfectly fine without any problems, but still, the game was gold, it was, I shouldn't be having that problem. I don't understand it, I looked through all the graphics thing, all the settings people did, and changes in the set, it worked, rollback drivers, stuff like that, it still didn't work. So it's, the basic question, why is this game still out? Why do I have to wait an extra two days? Why couldn't you just release it two days later? Fix that problem. That's that's another thing about pre-ordering as well. What if the game releases in a, a broken state and they have to patch it? Well, wait a week, a month, however long to patch it, and then then you can buy the game and it'll be just because like how pissed would you be? You're like oh I can't wait for this game. I'm gonna preload it and buy it and everything. Boom, you preload it. Oh it doesn't work. Oh we need to patch it. That happened to me with the uh, was it Arkham Origins? I bought that on the day it came out, and that game was so broken. I got <laughs> <laughs> like, I kept getting stuck. Like, I would fall through the level oh and God. all this other stuff. And then eventually, a few weeks later, they patched all that stuff out, but it was completely broken. Yeah. Like, by that time, it's like you experienced that. You, that's, mm -hmm. That was your first experience of the mm -hmm. game. So, guys, we just had a couple of big surprises that we completely ignored <laughs> on the way through. We'll wow. have to pick this up next episode, um, but we will catch you guys again. Remember to like and subscribe. We love the views. Thank you guys very much. Have a great day. Bye.